about that, Father. We'll be going soon. Jones, did you feed them hounds? Yes, my father, yes. All right. Now, tighten her up, son. See your tickets while we're going. Yes, but where are we going? No more. They're thrashing that matter out over there now. Oh, they made you the leader. Why don't you say where to go? I'm only leader of the Missourians, daughter. There are families here from every state in the Union, I reckon. Can't be waiting on them forever, Dad. No, son. They're holding the tower over there now. I'll just step over and see what they got to say. Well, bless our wild heart. If it ain't Rick Cole. How are you, Zeke? Why, well, ask him to hide yourself when I see a boy. Been down Santa Fe way, Zeke. Just drifted in. Here's Wendy Bell. Looks like you'd winter through in good shape. Well, Coleman, most times I winter through in fair shape. This year, when the first grass showed, I'd only put on 60 pounds. <laughs> Say, Pastor, <laughs> he may be the colors of a likely stretch of country. Friend, could you cite us to a second Missouri anywhere out yonder? Sure, but it's a long, tough pull from here. 2,500 miles away you'd have to go. No, it's too far off. No place is too far if it's what we want. This is a land beyond Oregon. There ain't no land beyond Oregon, mister. West of Oregon comes the ocean, the way it's been told to me. The stretch is north of Oregon. How many people settled on now? It's Indian country. Except for the trappers, never a white man has left his track there. Only one trading post in that whole country. Who owns it? A Missouri trapper owns it. Hey, mister, will you tell me this? Hey, uh, hey, hey there! Since you all elected me the hiku to this outfit, let me do the talking. It's everything a Missourian's heart could crave. There's two snow-capped mountain ranges with peaks lost in the sky. And between them ranges, men, is a great valley. Lakes and streams everywhere. Fish, you ask, and game. There's salmon swarming up them rivers thicker than blackbirds in the cane patch. Men, will you undertake to lead us to that valley? I'd like nothing better, men. But our trails fork here. I've got business that calls me back down the road Santa Fe way. What business you follow, friend? I'm a trapper. Well, surely there's fur plenty out in that land beyond Oregon. Plenty. But I gotta kill me a pair of skunks. Back a piece on the road to Santa Fe. Hey, wait, wait. Friend, how do you find that valley? Well, more here, ascending a bull train clear through to old Tom Williams' trading post. First time it's ever been tried. String along behind them, and if they make it through, you'll find your valley. Tell that great white mountain hello for me. Goodbye, Zeke. Hey! Hey, maybe he fed us a fairy tale. Howdy, Mrs. Riggs. Land sake! <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure look fine, Mother Riggs. It's a long time since I've seen you. <laughs> you know, you always was a great hand to wander. Yeah, I ramble around. <laughs> and how are the little twins? Little? My land! Them girls has grown since you've seen them last. No. <laughs> they in the house? Mildred is. Elise went down to watch the boat come in. I reckon I'll saunter in and surprise Mildred. Oh, you sure will surprise them. <laughs> well, Rick, I sure <laughs> am glad to see you. Well, you certainly have doubled in size since last I set eyes on you, Mildred. You just must see Elise. I'll surely see her before I leave. There's a piece of elf whistling now.
Why, there's a home in all the South that wouldn't welcome the daughter of Colonel Cameron. True, but we can hardly become potential businesses. It's a tough proposition, girl. This pioneer life in a savage wilderness. We realize that, Captain Hollister, but we must keep the family together. Honey girl wants to stay with the sister Ruth, doesn't she? And our brother Dave's almost in man room. Ruth is right, Captain. The Cameron tribe must stick together. Say, you used the fellow I want to see. I want to play some more of that shell game. Have you got any more money? Oh, sure I got some money. When did you get that? From my mother-in-law. She lent it to me, but she don't know it. Here, I'll meet you below decks. Get along. Don't forget, I wait there for you. Still determined to be a sturdy pioneer? Quite determined, Mr. Thorpe. I told you about my plantation in Louisiana. It must be wonderful. Miss Cameron, those lands and servants are yours. If you'll take me with me. Well, I do thank you, but as I've said before, it's, it's quite impossible. Goodbye, Mr. Thorpe. I pay in and going to keep it. But if I lose, I give my mother-in-law a hair. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Here we are again. Well, guess you want to see the beautiful little ball under the show. Here you are. Now it's bound to be under one of them. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Now we'll shuffle them just a little bit, just to confuse you and take your choice. <clears throat> now, wait, they show you. Here, I fetch you two dollars. Two dollars, cover. They always do that for good luck. <laughs> now they, they show you. Now watch. <laughs> ah, you see, Gazzy, the hand is faster than the eye. Better luck next time. Oh, oh here. Who wants to buy my mother in law's stocking? Huh? Oh! There you are. What do you mean by spending my money? My mama, I'm going to give you that. Give me my money. Give it to her. Hurry up. Give me the rest of it. Why, uh, madam, that's my own money. That's my money. No, no, mama, that's his money. Captain, I demand that that man give me my money. Hand it over. See, Mama, didn't they tell you we would win? Oh, you big loafer. Get out of here. Spending my life earning. Now, Bob, you get off my boat. If you set foot on it again, I'll put you in irons and land you at St. Charles on my way back. Now you step 
down and make yourself easy, and I'll brew you a cup of tea. Oh, that's awfully nice of you, Miss Rick. Thank you. Someone else. Wait. It was this way. I thought you were Elise, ma'am. Elise? Ma yes, just thought I'd surprise her, sort Did of. Did you indeed? Let me tell you. If you like someplace, I'll tell you. Oh. Well, what is it? You're as pale as a ghost. Oh, it's nothing. It's a talk, really. I... But there must be something oh, wrong. Nothing, just a, an unpleasant occurrence. I'm going to explain that play. There's nothing to explain. But I'm going to tell you anyhow. It seems to me you're forcing yourself on this lady. Is that how it seems to you? How else can I take it? It's nothing to me how you take it. But it matters a heap to me, ma'am, how you understand. Perhaps not. But if it concerns Miss Cameron, I'll demand an explanation. You will? Then speak your piece. Mr. Salt, will, will you please take me to my brother? With pleasure. I'll be looking for you shortly. Well, I won't be hard to locate. Hello, honey girl. Hello. Thank you so much, Mr. Thorpe. It's a great pleasure. Just think this wagon will be your home for the next six months. And after that, the cabin in the wilderness. My mind is made up, Mr. Thorpe. We're going with the settlers. You know my brother, David? Yes. Yeah. Hello, Dave. How are you? <laughs> Howdy, boy. Hello, Zeke. Howdy, Bill. <laughs> hey, Jack. I've been telling you about this here boy, Coleman. He can heave a knife into a mark so big every time. I'll bet you Buffalo Hood can't heave a left post back at him. Call the bet. Now, oh, here, boy. <laughs> Yes, now, wild heart! Oh, I've seen him do it a hundred times, eh, Bill? That's another buffalo hide you owe me, Tex. You remember, Bill, that time up for, on the Snake River? Oh, oh, I said it. Hey, boy, <laughs> I want to know about old Ben Grizzle. I hear the Indians down there. Only it wasn't Indians downed him. How? Oh. Renegade White's done it. How oh, come? He's been wolfing all winter. Yeah? Must have had two, three thousand dollars worth of wolf felt. Oh, easy, man. He was hacked up and stuck full arrow. It looked like engine work, all right. The wolf pelts was gone. If ever I find them hellhounds, I'll sure make them hunt their holes. No best. Who's that young buck over there with no hair on his face? That's uh, Brett Coleman. He very quick with his knife. Mm -hmm. Where does he come from? He come from the plains, the mountains. He live with the Indians. He can throw a knife through the heart in 20 feet. He's the best shot in all this country. He knows everything. He'll know too much for his own good someday. Le conocen hasta en México. Right. Vamos a tomarnos un trago. Yes. ¿Quieres comer? All right. If old Ben had lived, he'd be going on about 72 now, wouldn't he? Engine's never done this. Was renegade white. And they've left their mark. Oh, 
I say I do. <laughs> say, Zeke, who was that he grizzly that just went by? Well, that's Red Flack. He's bullwhacking for Wellmore. He's going to whack Wellmore's string chairs in order. You reckon you'll ever find out who downed old Ben? Just possible that a certain low-down coyote left his sign there. Hello, Coleman. Howdy, Wellmore. Changed my mind. I'll scout for that bull train after all. Well, that's a ray of sunshine. Shake hands before you change your mind again. Got a good wagon boss for the trip? Red flag. A fairly ruffian, but he can maul the toughest freighter on the plains into a pump without even working up a sweat. He can do that, eh? Black? Ha! Well, he likes to do it. But he can run a bull train. Here he comes now. Uh, we won't. All right, it's set. Likely you two have met before. Uh, I reckon not. Coleman's gonna scout for the train. And he understands that. If he can have final say in all matters dealing with the Indians. Yes, well, who's got the final say about busting this bull train? He understands that you're the wagon yes. boss. Another thing, another thing. Am I supposed to be witness to them wooden head pilgrims well, crossing the plains? The more that goes along, the better it is for uh, them and you in case the Indians jump you. Well, all right, all right. Make it clear to him. But I'm wagon boss. Oh, he understands that fact. Seems to be a right pleasant cuss. He's a ruffian, but he's a real wagon boss. Likely he is. Must have done a big trade in wolf pelts this year. Yes, we had a big trade with the wolfers. Flack sell you any of these? Flack? Oh, he didn't do any wolfing last winter, I guess. What outfit did you buy the biggest bunch from? A fellow named Lopez came in about a month ago with close on to $5,000 worth. Lopez, eh? I guess I don't know him. I signed him up as a bullwhacker on the train. You did, eh? I'll see you next year. Bring your scalp along back home. All right, goodbye. That's so. It said me is. I don't know where they're going to get to. I'm going to scout for that bull train. Good. Oh, Mr. Cameron, this is Mr. Coleman. Howdy, Mr. Coleman. How do you do, sir? Uh, he can tell you more about that country where you're going and what kind of an outfit you need than any man around here. Thanks. Wendy, throw my bags in with yours and Zeke, will you? All right, I will. Tell Zeke I'm going along. All right, boy. Mr. Coleman, would you mind looking over my outfit? Certainly not. Uh, we'll go have a peek at it. Where is it? Right over there, sir. Honey, girl, it's time for your history lesson, dear. Now, uh, how many stars in the flag? Twenty-six. How many stars? Thirty. Now, you know better than that. There's thirteen. And what do they stand for? The 13 original colonies. Now, remember that. Now, who oh, discovered well, the Columbia it's... River? Mr. Coleman, Robert this is my Ray. sister, Ruth. Honey girl, it isn't safe to be sitting in a rocking chair when there are certain persons present. I think you'll find we have everything. Plenty of guns, a rifle, and a fowling piece. How about ammunition? Plenty. One thing, I don't see any barrel. A barrel? Yeah, you'll need a water barrel. There'll be long stretches without water. Knew we'd forget something. I'll go get one. All right. What I was aiming to tell you was this. When I came the into the room... right next there had an extra one. Oh, uh, quick work, son. Say, it wouldn't be a bad idea to take two barrels. Suppose you go rustle another one. I'll do that. When I came romping into the rigs cabin... How's this one? Oh, well, that's fine. Looks like barrels grow on trees around here. Mr. Cameron, you better tell your sister to change that pretty dress. She won't get very far in that. Yes, sir. We're on some traveling clothes. Have a peek around here. We have a trailer. I like him better than Mr. Tharp. 
honey girl, we'll finish your history lesson. Yeah. Oh, no. Then you want to talk. Oh, if you get back on the peensy bell and make yourself scared. If you're here when the boat pulls out, the boys will certainly lead your pony out from under you. I had no intention of staying. I'll be on the pinsy bell when she leaves. You see the jar. My goodness, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Better try again. Come on, here. Up you go, up. Oh, you stubborn yakers. I give you yap in the yo, I bet you young. Come on, up. Well, hello there, Gus. What you call that thing you got there? Oh, his name is Jack. Jack, oh yes, but that's only half of it. Well, see, he's only a half of us. Well, <laughs> what's the matter? Can't you get him up? I don't know. I pull and I pull, but he won't come up. <laughs> wait, wait, I got an idea. Say, what did you say to him then? <laughs> I, I told him a joke about my mother-in-law. <laughs> wait, you should come. Gosh! What have you got there? Oh, this, this is my new horse. I just bought him. You bought him? Sure. Say, yep. <laughs> that was <wasn't laughs> <laughs> That rubber's for you and me, eh? Ah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, if it ain't Bill Thorpe, eh? <laughs> I always thought you was hung and planted. Yes, Beck. No, my time ain't arrived yet, Flack. Yeah. Well, it looks as though it might be drawing close. Uh, how come? Well, I've been promised a hanging bee if I don't get out on the Pingsy Bell. And the captain promised me a necktie party if I set foot on the boat. <laughs> Gates of nowhere to go. Uh, appears to me you do your shooting by daylight. With too many people looking on, eh? <laughs> well, as long as you can't go and you can't stay, just what do you figure to do about it, eh? Well, I've always been able to wiggle out. Yeah, appears to me as if you was born to be drowned, eh? <laughs> <laughs> with a gun as you was. I can drive a nail at 30 feet. Yeah. Well, as long as you can't go and you can't stay, wouldn't be a bad idea if you was to go along with me. Well, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Where do you happen to be headed for? Well, anyways, it's out there while well, there ain't no... Noose are waiting for you, eh? <laughs> Bye, boy. Well, Wendy, I trapped him with his jug down at Joe's. <laughs> hey, Wendy! That's the last you steal civilization for a long time. Hey! Try it. Back up here, will you? Back up. I gotta finish that with, with, with Wendy. <laughs> Hey, that's what you get for not drinking with me. I'll drink at your next wedding. Yeah, hey, uh, Wendy, uh, do some of them musical things with it with your mouth. Ah, that's all stuff. Dad knows something you... Oh, well. Coyote, eh? That's no coyote. That's a stuff. Hey! Hey, you ever kill a dead Indian? No, I never killed a dead one. Before they was dead, did you? No, you see, the engines are my friends. They taught me all I know about the woods. They taught me how to follow a trail by watching the leaves. And how to cut your mark on a tree so you won't get lost in the forest. And they taught me how to bury in in the snow so you won't freeze to death in storms. And they taught me how to make a fire without even a flint. And they taught me how to make the best bow and arrows, too. Did they teach you how to make cat poopers? <laughs> no, that's one of their own secrets. Well, boys, I guess we better get going. Uh, 
Oh God, our Father, as you sit on high and look down on us poor mortals, forgive our prayers. I am about to lead these people into a wild and dangerous country. Give me strength and wisdom, oh God, to lead them through. Where's my steps? Mama, I got everything packed up in the wagon. How can I get in the wagon, you idiot? Then look, I sure look, Mama. Put your feet up on there. That's it. Now wait. And if that's it. Up you go, Mama. That's it. Now one more foot up. Now up, Mama. Up, Mama. That's it. Up. Wait, Mama. You're sitting on my head, Mama. Please, that's it. There you go. Get in, folks. Get in, folks. We're going. We're going now. Get in there. <laughs> Come on, you must just let's come out of here. Come here, you must just. Get in there. 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 Get in
Captain Hollister, an old friend of mine, to put back to shore, and I followed you. Yes, sir, I know that's what you told me, but I'm afraid you're flattering her. Oh, on my honor, no. You got the truth of our book. Hello, Fess. The back is going to be mighty scarce later on. No respingers, you. No respingers. Boy, I'm going back to a windy bill and get a slugger. Come on. Hey. Her name's Lopez, eh? Uh, Lopez, that's me. You and Black good friends, he tells me. Huh? Black and me been friends 12, 15 years. We're out wolfing together last winter, eh? No, no, no. Wolfing. She not good business. No money. And you didn't get many. No, not much. Funny, Wellmore said you sold him more furs than any other half dozen out there. No. He must be talking about someone else, not me. Well, no matter. See you often. Got a good bunch of bullwhackers, Black. That uh, Lopez strikes me as a good hand. Uh, you bet. Lopez can pound him along. You and him old friends, eh? Oh, Lopez and me? Nah, I never seen him till he signed on this trip. My mistake. Uh, I don't like this man both. Eh? If he asks after me, you tell him you never seen me till you signed on this trip. You're too late. Why? He just speaks to me, and I tell him we was old friends. What? Ha! What do you use under your hat instead of brain? You need your brain. And you got here. Yeah, no, you're talking sense. <laughs>
claim the faith. Well, Zeke. Hello, boy. Why don't you stole my partner and let me dancing with myself? Yeah? <laughs> Say, boy, it just come to me a minute ago where I seen that there saw before. Where? Camped on the shimmer with Black and Lopez. Dear old friend. Are you sure of that? Yes, Sergeant. So keep your eyes peeled on him, son. Shining on my old plantation in Louisiana. All it needs is a lovely woman to preside. Someday you'll find me. I have found a Ruth. Oh, please, Mr. Falconer. I told you before that there can be no happiness without love. But love will come. Getting into dangerous country, Flack. So I'll be riding to the Pawnee villages to pick up some Indian scouts. Yes? Well, you're likely to lose your scalp out there. I'll bet you a couple of wolf pelts I bring it back with me. How long you be gone, Coleman? Three, four days, a week maybe. Back so soon. I thought maybe you wouldn't be coming back at all. And just why did you think that? <laughs> Well, after I sort of took the dark-eyed beauty away from you, I thought you might be decamping. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Thorpe. <laughs> I never quit a job in the middle of the road. <laughs> oh, quite so, quite so. But after the girl quit you in the middle of the road... Say that again, Mr. Thorpe. I know who you are now. And I know why you quit the Cimarron country, too. Oh, well, no necessity to have quarrels among friends. Friends? You threw too wide a loop. Remember this. There are three of you. I'm not your friend. Yes. <laughs> well, you let him scare you stiff. Not at all. Only an idiot, you know, presses a quarrel when the other man has a knife pressed uh, against him. Uh, good excuse. Wolf pelts, eh? What does that mean? Don't mean nothing. It doesn't to me, but it does to you. Yeah, Papa. where'd you get that notion? When he mentioned wolf pelts, you look as though he'd rammed a knife in you. <laughs> Not exactly what I'd call a poker face. Eh, uh, well, what of it? Oh, nothing. Only I'm beginning to understand why you don't like Coleman. Bye, Wendy. Zeke, I'll be seeing you in the happy hunting grounds, if not before. Good luck, boy. Bye. Well, Miss Ruth, I got some good news for you. What? I'm going to be away for a while. I'm going scouting. Well, isn't that dangerous in the open country? Lord, no. I love it. Especially now that it's spring and everything's so happy. Why, there's trees out there, big tall pines, just a reaching and a reaching as if they wanted to climb right through the gates of heaven. And there's brooks, too, with the water smiling all day long. But the part I like best is the night. Lying out there beneath a blanket of stars with that old moon smiling down on you. 
And every time you look up, there she is, sort of guarding over you, like a mother minding her young. Sometimes it's so beautiful that I just lie there, listening. Birds singing, brooks laughing, and the wind sort of crooning through the forest, like some great organ. Oh, I've always loved it. But I reckon I'm going to be lonely this time. You know, you can get sort of used to having somebody not like you. And when they're not around, you miss them. Not liking you. That's why I reckon I'm going to be lonesome. But I'll be thinking of you. Goodbye. And you just take care you don't lose your scalp. Pink, is he leaving the train? Yes, miss. He's riding out to Pawnee Village. Well, how far are they? Oh, nigh on a hundred miles. Wasn't that dangerous? Well, he's likely to lose his scalp before he gets there. But once in the villages, he's safe. So don't you worry about him, miss. What? Why should I worry about him? Uh, I don't know, miss. I don't know. But seemed like as if maybe you was. Not at all. He means nothing to me. No, no, of course not. Good night. Good night, Zeke. Hey, you got back here at last, eh? Yeah. There's plenty of buffalo sign out here, so I'll be riding out to pick up fresh meat. Yeah, well, who's keeping you? I'll see you at the river crossing. Yeah. Hey. Lopez! Lopez! Up! Yeah. You two have been waiting for your chance. Here it is. Go out on a buffalo hunt. Me? Uh, nah. I kill hundreds of buffalo. Uh, Why should I go? Yeah. Get them cobwebs out of your brain. He means, Lopez. We might find better game. Watch him till he leaves the ponies, and then give it him in the back. <laughs> Get my mule useless across. Well, uh, 
Get your mother-in-law to write him, eh? <laughs> Mr. Bascom. Yes? Mr. Bascom. You know, Ed don't like that fella. No? He's the kind who will pat you on your back to your face and then laugh in your face behind your back. <laughs> and another thing. Yes? If he had a mother-in-law like mine, he would never laugh. <laughs> The hunt was a great success. We bagged our buffalo. Hey, oh. Did you get your meat, eh? Hey? <laughs> este es el mejor tiro que yo he visto. Good, good. Well, we better shove it off, then. Eh? I'll take her back and settle on my plantation. Your... your plantation, ain't it? <laughs> Lopez, he's hollered so much about that the plantation of his, he believes it himself, ain't it? <laughs> what? The Senor Torpy has no plantation? Plantation, yeah. All you got in the world is a dirty deck of cards and a crooked one of that. See? Yeah. Coleman's been gone two days. Yeah, I've been kind of worrying about that myself. Oh, Eagle Cave says last time he seen him, he was headed for the train. Uh, another thing, the, the Cameron's haven't crossed yet. No. I better start around down there and see what's holding them. Huh? Yes, we'd better help them across. Yeah. Oh. Well, I think we can... We were just wondering what would become of you. Where's your horse? He stepped in a prairie dog hole and broke his neck. Come near breaking mine, too. Were you hurt? No, I was knocked out for a spell. Now, I'll put these in your wagon and help you across. Flack said we could only use the wheelers. Flack said? What does he know about water? He never took a bath in his life. Johnny! 
There's the camera and wagon. I'll go greet the little fella. Greet, eh? Yeah. Well, Lopez and me go, go greet the jug. Oh, you take them from here on in, Dave. Shallow water. All right, Go back to my saddle. All right. Get up. Come on, Shorty. Come on, Shorty. I was just coming over to help you. Thank you. We had the best of help. Help? Who? What's the matter, Lopez? Seeing a few ghosts? Me? No, no. Drive on into the corral, Dave. All right. Come on there. There's there. Come on now. I'll be seeing you three later about matters and things. Why, hello, old boy. Howdy, Zeke. Where? What happened? Pony stepped in a dog hole. Yeah? Well, I suppose a prairie dog shot that hole through your saddle and into your horse. Eh? Nicky. Who has gone from camp, Zeke? Dropper Lopez come in during the night. In the early morning, sent a wagon out for the meat. Well, uh, nice mess you made of things. Not at all. Two hundred yards running is considerable of a handicap. Besides, other days are coming. Now, don't you fool yourself. Here he is, here he is. Black, the engine's been sending up smoke signals for several days. Now. Yes, well, I see them. I'll skirmish around with the Pawnees for a few miles. Well, go on. There ain't no one keeping you. No, but you'd better keep Thorpe and Lopez here. Why? I got a feeling that if either one of them leaves camp, they'll never come back. What do you mean by that? Just the way it sounded. Yeah. Hey, look now, look now, eh? Lopez, try a long shot at him. No fire. Cheyenne, you want a palaver? Oh, they look to me as if they're out for half. They will be if we take a shot at them. I don't need war. I'll go out and palaver with them. Go on, go on. Maybe so you don't come back. Huh? <laughs> Look how clearly his horse is acting. Yeah, he's riding zigzag. That's Indian sign that he wants to palaver. <laughs> There's a chief riding out to meet him now for a powwow. I got the lunch out of the house and I'm going to Why, Anna? Why, Chetty, Anna? Why, it's a thing out of the house. Yes, sir. Why, it's a thing out of the house. Why, it's a thing out of the house. Zeke, I saw no turn on her and hide no horse in the office. How? This is Black Elk, an old friend of mine. Do they mean peace or war? Peace, as long as they march straight through the Cheyenne country without stopping to settle. Bye. Hi. Hi. Now 
Now that we're going to be friends, they'll probably bring their families over here to beg. So feed them well and treat them right, and we'll have no trouble. Oh. All right, What is he saying about me? He says that Corey wants you for his squaw. And he says, Black or Buff will get you. Black or Buff? Well, Black's got a lot of horses. Miss Ruth, you shouldn't be riding out here alone like this, away from the train. Why not? Because this is dangerous country and anything might happen. You wouldn't care. Care? Me? Why should you care? Listen, girl. If anything happened to you, it'd be like throwing my heart to the wall. <laughs> Don't worry, it's Black Elk and some of his braves. <laughs> Come and squaw. Come and squaw. Well, he's saying that I'm your squaw. Seems like that's what he's driving at. Well, you tell him that you don't want me for your squaw. I've never told Black Elk a lie yet. He knows my tongue is straight. But well, what do you mean? Well, it wouldn't be true if I told him I didn't want you. It happens I do. And you've no better taste than to tell me that before all these savages. I'd tell you that in front of the whole world. This silly joke is gone far enough. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you what, 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 I'm going to tell you from here on down, Dave. It's a little easier going. Hello. Oh, that's it. Careful, baby. Now, Miss Ruth, you cling on to me. Put your arms around my neck, honey, dear. A little tighter. A little tighter. Just a little tighter. I got the right color there. 
Are you all right, honey girl? It was a pretty bad place, wasn't it, Greg? Yeah, but I sort of liked it. Baby, let's see if our wagon's down yet. Come on, let's go. Thank you, Greg. Well, 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 well. Ha, <laughs> ha! So I've seen that girl with her arms around your neck at last. <laughs> yeah, but she sure unwrapped them when she got on safe footing. Yeah? You know, she don't care nothing about me, Zeke. <coughs> Man, you can never tell how a woman feels by the way she acts. There's all riddles, all of them, and you just gotta guess them. And no matter which way you guess, you're wrong. Looks like as if the way they're putting some of them outfits over there, they're gonna lose them. Ha-ha! <laughs> what did I tell you? Let's get out of here before they get a beat on us. Did you hear that terrible crash? Hear it? I seen it. Yes. That was your wagon. Oh, oh, but was my mother-in-law in it? No, she wasn't. Oh, that's too bad. What'd you say? I said I am glad. Uh, it's lucky for you that I wasn't, your laughing hound. What you mean? Because I was with your wife, Sarah, and she gave birth to twins. Twins? Are they both mine? Both? Oh, Mama, are they boys or girls? One of each. Oh, Zeke, and my papa. <laughs> mama and my papa. Papa and my mama. Well, yeah. <laughs> they got two for one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's drink to the happy event. Wait a minute. There was two events. They have two drinks. Here, give me that jug. I'll take a pull of that myself. Jim. Where'd you blow in from, boy? All the way from the big river. On the... <laughs> How long are we going to camp here? Well, just as long as it takes to fix up the outfit. Basham, you tell them pilgrims of yours there's 500 miles of desert ahead of us. And them that don't like what's coming to them, now's the time for them to turn back. I hate to see you at menial task. If we were only back at my old plantation in Louisiana, you'd have a dozen servants to wait on you. Let's turn back. Turn back, Mr. Thorpe? Why, oh. Why? oh, honey, go, didn't I tell you to stay away from the fire? Yes, and you told me not to be sitting in a rocking chair when Rex Coleman is around. Hello, Coleman. Howdy, Dave. You shot these turkeys. Won't you stay and help us eat them? No, uh, I just had supper with the Bascoms. Sorry, Brick. Think I'll go on up old Zeke. How do is that for you, Wendy? Number 84. Uh, uh, here comes 85. Hello, Zeke. Hello, Wendy. boy. I smell 
smell of turkey are cooking. That's all I got was a smell. Deal me a hand of them flapjacks. That's the way it's done, Gussie. My old arm's giving up. Now you try. Well, I'll get a pail of water. That's easy. I can do that. See, I'm saw Zeke do that till he broke his arm. Yes, and you know someday my mother-in-law is going to talk so much, she's going to break her yaw. <laughs> <laughs> Say, boy, I wouldn't let my mother-in-law boss me around like that. Stand up to her like a man. Face her down, boy. <laughs> if it was me, I'd tell her what was on my chest. You got nothing on your chest but wind. <coughs> you old polecat. <laughs> I've just been talking with some trappers who come out of the Southwest. They say the country they call California is wonderful. Yes, so I've heard. Why won't you come with me to a land like that? Are you going there? If you'll come with me. But what about your plantations in Louisiana? Oh. Well, <laughs> if we like California better, uh, we could sell my holding. And buy vast lands out there. Well, it, it's a compliment to offer me all that, but it can't be. I'm a join Davy. Oh, Dave. Dave, come over here. Black Elk here says that you and your sister were so good to him when he come in to visit that he wants to give you all them ponies. Oh, that's kind of them, Zeke, but... We couldn't take their horses. Oh, of course you could. They got hundreds of ponies. Uh, he wants you to show him where to put them. Now, you go and throw them ponies in with your herd. Well, Zeke, you lying old coot. That engine's buying Cameron's sister. We're Coleman's squaw. <laughs> well, 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 why not? Oh, Coleman find himself a squaw, eh? Zeke, you old whiskered Cupid, you. <laughs> I know the very sight of you. What have I done now? You've made me the joke of the plains. Me? Who else tried to buy me like an Indian squaw? You put me to shame before them all. I call you imagining things. Oh, oh, oh. Zeke always told me women were damn funny. Mr. Salt, I've changed my mind. I'll go with you to California if you'll go at once. One? Why, yes, yes. Uh, I'll make preparations immediately. This is a fine state of affairs. This man Thorpe isn't all he claims to be. My mind is made up, Davy, but we're going to California. Where's what? Hey! I just came in to tell you goodbye. Hey, goodbye? Well, where are you going? I'm going to take my outfit and leave you here. Hey, your outfit? All you got is one horse and two guns. No. The Cameron outfit's mine now. Oh, it is, eh? Yeah, we're going to California. So I'll bid you a fond farewell. No, you ain't. No? No. What do you suppose I grubs take you for, eh? So far you've been a fizzle. One try, one miss. Oh, he's no longer in my way. Oh, he's in mine. Well, tear him down yourself. All oh, right, I'd like to kick him into pump. I'd like to break him in two like that. Well, why not? Uh, I don't mind fists or feet. Or even a gun. It's the way he throws that knife. Well, why should I risk it? Because you're a dead shot. You're a going to stick. You're a going to prove how good you are before you leave the fort. And if I don't? Well, if you don't, I'll tell that little filly there's a wide open noose waiting for you. In every rib of town. Ah, uh, Thorpe, you do your job before you leave the fort.
Howdy, Henry. How are things, Colvin? Just fine. Say, Black Elk was telling me that all the Indians the West were gathering to keep you all from passing through. So they tell me. Black Elk and the Cheyennes are going west to hold a powwow with the Shoshone. Yeah, Black Elk tells me that it's almost certain that the Cheyennes will declare war later. Likely. Oh, Pete Rubido was asking about you a while ago. Pete? Where is he? Camp Spring yonder with his new squaw. I think I'll ramble down and see him. Say, Henry, will you put a new uh, cap nipple on this gun? Sure will, boy. A new uh, trigger spring in the pistol. All right. I'll leave him with you while I go see Pete. You ready when you come back? about to unite this loving and devoted couple in the holy bonds of wedlock. Hank Gillis, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Abigail Vance, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? <laughs> she does. is how Coleman done told you that if Lopez here or Thorpe done stayed off into the brush, they weren't likely as I'll never come back. No? Sure, he made some kind of a bluff. What of it? Well, uh, Thorpe stayed out and he ain't a never coming back. Hey? No. He's done gone back to his old plantation. Yeah. Well... You won't go to California with Thorpe now. Why not? He and Coleman just met in the brush, and Coleman shot him. Are you sure? I heard the shot, and I saw Coleman standing there over him. It suits me, too. So he'll even do murder. And so I pronounce you man and wife. And may peace and happiness be yours. <laughs> Murder. Where? Where, girl? Who? Coleman met Mr. Thorpe in the brush and shot him. That's a serious accusation, my girl. Are you sure? My brother saw it. Men, we can't have cold-blooded murderers among us. There's the man that shot Bill Thorpe down like a dog. Go, Bert. Go get a rope. Get a rope. Get the rope. Get the rope. And just who accuses me of killing Thorpe? It, uh, it was Miss Cameron. You, eh? So you'd like to see me hang? <laughs> Listen to me, you. This boy Coleman here just couldn't have killed Thorpe. Why not? Because he didn't have no guns on him. He left his one with Dutch Henry to... Coleman and Thorpe heard out with the Cameron gal. If it wasn't Coleman, who was it who shot Thorpe? Since you're aiming to know... I'll tell you who done it. Who? I shot that skunk myself. Coleman, a friend of his men. He's lying to save his neck. What could Zeke have against a man like Thorpe? You want to know that? Too? Yes, I want to know that too. Well, I'm a telling you. I was camped out pretty close to you 
and I heard that little powwow you had with Thorpe. Yeah, what are you driving at? Just this. When a man begins to do a lot of talking about hanging, he'd better make pretty sure as to who's going to decorate the end of the rope. Get my meaning? Well, Thorpe ain't nothing to me. It's no fair of mine. That's just what I was a-thinking. Uh, when Coleman ain't going to do no scouting while I'm boss of this train, I'm leaving him behind. Well, no. We're taking on a new scout. Guess again, Flack. I started with this outfit, and I'll be with it at the finish. Who says so? I'm just telling you. I got two reasons. One is I told Wilmore I'd scout the train through. And the other is a little personal business I aim to transact at the end of the trail. See if you can figure out what that is, Flack. Coleman, the settlers are willing to push on. We'll follow you. What's all this talk about engines? It's true. The engines are gathering to the westward to stop us from going through. Engines have never yet prevented our breed of men from traveling into the setting sun. Go on. Lead the way. Well, get your outfits together. We're going. Never mind what you see or what you hear. Red Flack is still boss of the train. Get going!
Tātad hopā atsāk rāksāt, va!
much for him. Open your arms to them and care for our loved ones until we meet again on the other shore. Amen. Well, Zeke. Oh, Wendy's gone on another trail. You and me was. Well, you and me was. Uh, <coughs> Well, Zeke, I'm going to trail the engines and make sure they go back to their village. So you scout the train ahead and I'll pick it up in a week or so. Bye, Zeke. Bye, boy.
of order. Mama, I got good news for you. Oh, you're always bad news to me. Get on your long underwear quick. Why? You're going in the snow up to your... Up to your... your <laughs> way up, Mama, and hand me out my bare overcoat. Very <laughs> useless. You're going someplace you won't want to sit down. It's so cold, it'll freeze your hoose off. You wait and see. I think I'll go say howdy to the camera. This is my best overcoat. Well, I'd hate to see your worst one. <laughs> hello, Gus. Oh, hello there, Black. I'm certainly glad to see you back again. What are you wearing the heavy overcoat for? I'm getting all ready for that snow. No, we won't be there for days. Then, anyway, I'm going to keep warm while I can. Where's the camera now, Seth? Oh, we left them four or five days back. Left them? Yes, all the horses give out. They couldn't go on. Fifteen, twenty wagons. They all went back to the fort. I hate it to tell you, son. See, why did you let the Camerons go? Uh-huh, not my doing, son. Flat knows I used to have an engine sign, so he sends me on ahead to scout. And when I come back, they'd all drop out. If engines chance on them wagons, they'll kill a lot of them. I'm afraid so, wreck boy. The way clear ahead, Zeke. You've got him. Yeah. I'm going back for the camera. Good luck, son. Get up, Jenny. There you sit. Get up, Jenny. I don't know who smells the bird. Come on, come on, come that you'd come. I'd have been here a heap sooner if I could have. Say, Dave, you'd better cut off that trailer and throw everything into one wagon. All right. I'll hitch up old Roni and we'll see if we can get out of here. After you left, old Zeke told me the truth about some matters, talk and slack and all. He did, eh? Sorry, I was so stupid. Oh, don't worry, Miss Ruth. Things did look sort of queer. I should have known better. Well, we all get off on the wrong trail once in a while. We'll make it through, all right. Well, that's fixed. Can I do something, Frank? No, I guess not. Got to overtake those settlers in a week or so. Hey, you are, Ruthie. Going again, baby. the winter nor the peaks of the highest mountain. We're building a nation, but we've got to suffer. 
No great trail was ever blazed without hardship. And you gotta fight. That's life. When you stop fighting, that's death. What are you gonna do? Lie down and die? No! Not in a thousand years. You're going on with me. The word is said and we'll follow you. You ready to start a sun up? Up again. Well, whether you're down in the boat of us, your gosh, I'll get him tonight. But they can hear a shot at night. Uh, they can't hear a knife. They all know this knife of mine. Uh, well, here's a knife they don't know. No, no, no. I'm afraid of that knife. Uh, I know where you got it. Uh, it will get us in trouble, uh, sure. How? Oh. Because a dead man's knife is that medicine. Here, yeah, stop that dribble. Uh, Take off. And wait for the night. Thank I have on here. Then it goes. Wait until he's bedded down. Then... and make me a good girl and take care of her. Aren't you going to ask God to take care of Brett Coleman? Oh, Zeke says that Brett Coleman can take care of himself. the way you all look at it. But those two men killed a man in cold blood, and they've got to pay. Not that I've got hatred in my heart, but it's that I'm the law out here, that's all, and law is justice. Well, Zeke, I'll see him to the end of the trail, but then I'm picking up a new trail here. Yonder stands the great white mountain. And down below lies the valley I've told you about. Holman, you have fulfilled our hopes. Neighbors, friends, it is fitting that we give thanks to the Almighty. Our Father, we thank thee for leading us to this land of promise, for guiding our footsteps safely through the dangers of our pilgrimage. In this valley of our dreams, we'll build our homes and serve thee, O Father, and our children's children shall praise thy name. Amen.
The way is clear ahead. All gentle slopes. So drive down, my friends, and settle it. Lead the way. Zeke will lead the way down. Our trails fork here. You mean you are leaving us? There's a trail I've followed for over 3,000 miles now. And I'm heading back to pick it up again and follow it to the end. Bowman, you are the breed of man that would follow a trail to the end. Thanks, Bascom. Friend, we'll go on. Boy, there's two of them. Bad one. Now I'm going with you. No, Zeke. You stay here and look after Ruth and her outfit. Rick, you're not leaving. Yes, Miss Ruth, I'm pulling out. They say you're going to hunt down Slack and Lopez. What I aim to do. But you can't do this awful thing. Take two lives. Frontier justice. Don't go, Rick, don't go. The job I've got to finish. Don't you see? It doesn't matter about them. I'm afraid for you. They'll kill you. They're everything in the world to me, Frank. I can't let you go. I kill them. The thing has to be done. Someday, somewhere, our trails will cross again. Mustn't be a carrying on that away. He's gone. You'll never come back. Oh, no, no, you just mustn't do this, Miss. You'll have me a up in here pretty soon. I'm telling you that everything is going to be all right. When spring comes in that valley, he'll be tracking back again. I know that boy. I know it. Now, come, come, come on. Miss. I can't get up. Yes, looks as if you're done for, Lopez. Look, don't go in and leave me, Black. What? Do you think I'm staying here? Well, then leave me, Black. Ah, uh, the do you no good. You'll be froze to death in an hour. Right. Hey, help me. I'll get away. Black! Yeah. Black! Black! Don't let me die. Alone. Stay with me. Black! before you have company.
I got a hankering to trail on down into Mexico. Old Bill Gillis come told me that them there black-eyed gals was just full of fire. Yeah. Did you're not really leaving us. Yeah, gal, I'm a pulling out. You's all nice and settled now. And this here valley's getting altogether too civilized for me. Whenever I get more than three or four families within a hundred mile of me, I begin to feel kind of crowded. That's not why you're going to be. Why else, Gail? Freck has never come back. You're going out to look for him. Now, wherever that boy Breck Coleman is at, he's a looking out for himself. Now, don't you fret about him. Looking at that dress. This is the anniversary of the the day that the wagon train left from Missouri. The last time I had this on, I was sitting in the rig of cabin. In a raffle chair? Yes, honey, you. In a rocking chair. Regular to Panther. Yeah! It's a two-legged Panther. The only kind whatever give me that Comanche yell as a signal. We might just as well start to unpack. What, ain't you going? No use of going now. He's only a bit up in the timber there, and he's headed this way. Zeke, won't you stay over for the anniversary? Yes, gal, I'll stay. And I just recollected. I got a little present for you. Oh, Zeke, what is it? Well, a young fellow named Brett Coleman left it with me. And he told me to give it to you in case he didn't show up. Where is it, Zeke? I hid it in the hollow of the big tree at the bend of the trail. You'll find it there. Thanks, Zeke. I'll go get it. 